al khair my name is wagi botros i am ministering here at first baptist church for the connection with the middle eastern people if you are a guest we are welcoming you so much you are in a very good place a warm church to welcome you we are going through 40 days of prayer and many people said that is prayers is important in the spiritual warfare but let me correct this prayers is a challenge itself because we know the information about prayers we know what bible said about the importance of biblical prayers in our lives as a believers but many times we forget this many times we just don't pray or we do every effort in the situation we are facing then finally we'll say let's pray <laughs> and the prayers is not for christians even the false religion have type of prayers and before we we start together let's just uh, see this two slides and i would like you i will ask you about we watch that this is uh, some muslims prayers in the train station and just observe it about this video clip you can speak i will hear you <laughs>
pastors, believers, without it, lifestyle of biblical prayers, there is no strong in their faith or in their lives and their witnesses. Even the Lord Jesus Christ himself He said, don't pray like the people are praying in corners and uh, in the synagogue and just would like the others so see them while they are praying. Pray in different style. Pray secretly. Prayers is uh, connecting your heart with God's heart is not a physical uh, activity in, in prayers but it is heart speak to God and uh, you can even in a crowded place just you are silent prayer no one will observe that you are prayer, but you're still connected with God. This is the unique thing in a biblical prayers. You can pray at any place, any time, 24-7, he is there for us. And uh, if we look to the Bible, we saw people pray in, at prison, at jail, prayed in, during the persecution. Praise God in prayers when something good happened. It is lifestyle of our Christian life. The Bible tells us that there is four types of prayers according to uh, 1 Timothy 2.1 that we have requests, specific requests. We have prayers, all the communication with God. We have intercessions. We have giving of thanks. And our, our life or our prayers could have all this type of prayers in, in our... Sometimes we just ask for a specific request. Like Peter. Peter, when Jesus came walking in the water, and uh, Peter, if you are you, just let me come to you. So Peter started to walk in the, you know, in the water. Oh, wow, I'm walking. Oh, so he started to begin to sink. So what happened? He prayed a specific request. Jesus, save me. He did not say, God, I praise you, and I know that you will answer if he, you know, both a... An introduction to his request, I believe he will sink. <laughs> so come to the Lord with your specific request. And he answered like that. I would like to talk with you today about the powerful of biblical prayers. In John 15, verse 7, and by the authority of Pastor Lynn, if you don't have a Bible, you can take the Bible in front of you home. Jesus said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. The best way to pray 
is to use God's word in your prayers. It is like you have a promise from someone and you go to him, you told him, you tell him, you promised me you will give me this gift. I come because you promised me. So you are, you go to God, telling him, God, this is what you say in your word. And I am asking you to accomplish your promise your word in my life. The best way to pray is to take the word of God and send it back to God. This is the best biblical, powerful prayer. Sometimes we, we go to pray like we, we are taking with God like a supermarket. God, I need, there is a lack of sugar at home. Would you send two pounds of sugar? God, we need two pounds of bananas. God, I need a girl to marry. God, I need a job. God, help me financially. God, give me a good health. God is not a supermarket. God would like to have an intimacy relationship with you and me through l prayers. How can we do that? I hear him from his word. I let his word abide in me and then take the same word to him in prayers. Many of believers' prayers is not according to the biblical principles. Let me tell you some example from the Middle Eastern. If I have a problem with Wally, so I go to God in prayers. God, take his health from him, please. He is planning to have his PhD. And he, did, he doesn't deserve it. Please don't allow him to get this degree. <laughs> Do you think it is biblical prayers? But if we ask ourselves, how can we abide in his word? What it means that? Abide in his word is to study his word. If we remember what happened in the Old Testament when the nation of Israel in the wilderness so God promised them to give every morning the manna to eat. The manna is a picture of the word of God. What is the requirement to take that? Everyone will take for himself. And everyone will take his daily need. He needs to take it fresh. So we need to study the word of God in a daily basis, in a lifestyle, to eat the word of God, to study the word of God, to understand the word of God. So study the word of God, not only that, not only through your intellectual thinking or your brain, your mind, but trusting the word of God. We need to trust the word of God because it is uh, the manual for my life and God's
character. It is the way. If he asks me for something and give me direction in his word, I need to trust what the word of God said to me. Not only that, but to obey it. If the word of God asks me to forgive somebody, what is the reaction? Sometimes I say, no, I, I don't think Tim Hall is deserved to forgive him. No, the word of God is telling me to forgive him. It is unconditional forgiveness. To love, love who? Even your enemy. Abide, that the word of God to abide in us, we need to obey the word of God. It's, it is dangerous. We, some, many Christians live what we call by masks. We have a mask at the church. I am a good man. I pray every body at the church will say, wow, what a wonderful prayer. Then I go out, different person. If you saw me in the street or in the market, or you will see me as a miserable person. It is not the Christian life in prayers. We need to live Christ everywhere in the time. So to study the word of God, trust his word, obey his word, and living his word. This is what it means that the word is abide. Abiding in his word is a result of an intimacy relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and in my life. If you don't have this intimacy relationship with him, so examine yourself. Examine yourself. You have a, sens a sensitivity in everything in your life because this relationship. But be careful. There is something could hinder our prayers even to reach the ceiling of these buildings. Number one, and confess sin. If you have sin in your life and the Holy Spirit is is telling you many times and reveal it uh, uh, every time you pray and uh, you continue not to confess to this, uh, your sin to God and ask for forgiveness I promise you your prayers will not be even heard from him. He will not hear your, your prayer. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. I will read the last part. And your sin have hide his face from you so that he does not hear. So that he does not hear. Number two, unforgiving spirit. If you have a problem to forgive, if your lifestyle to condemn more than you forgive, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said this is the standard. If you forgive people, my father will forgive you. 
if you will not forgive them, Father, for, neither will your, your Father forgive your trespasses. Number three, if you have a bitterness with your mate or with others. Peter said, Husbands, likewise dwell with them with understanding, give, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel and as being ears together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Living in harmony with your mate, with your friends, with your brothers, is very important for your prayers to be answered. Number four, what hinders our prayers? We don't ask. Not asking. James said that. James 4, 2, the last part, because you don't ask. You don't have because you don't ask. And many times, just God wants us to ask him. He knew what, what we need. But as I said, the prayers is the communication, relationship with him. I remember uh, Marlene, my daughter, asked me to teach her how can she drive. She was very little. So why you, you taught Mike, my, my brother, and not me? I said, OK, Marlene, as soon as your leg reach the brake, I will begin to teach you. So Marlene used to examine her toll every day. Every, believe me, every day. And the day she reaches the break, Dad, I can reach it. But she, she keeps asking, asking. It is a blessing that fathers hear their kids, their children, ask him or them for something. God is our good father if you accepted Christ. Don't deceive yourself. If you did not accept him, he is not your father. But if you accepted him, you can enjoy with a good father. So not asking is one of the hindering our prayers. Number five, the wrong motivation. Sometimes we ask, as I said, the example of, of Wally or to uh, uh, something with uh, selfishness uh, as it is in, in James 4.3. The last one who hinders our prayers, if you are not sensitive to the word of God. Insensitivity to the word of God. Proverbs 28, 9, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. God is answering every biblical prayers. Even say, yes, take it. Or, yes, but wait. Or, no, it's not good for you. God is answering all the prayers. There is no prayers. He is not answering it. Even he said, 
yes immediately or wait or is not good for you and you can understand that through your intimacy relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because if you are trusting him you know he is doing everything good for you yeah I remember a story having it is uh, uh, it is a funny story that uh, there is a man fall in love with uh, a girl and he asked her to marry and then he he fall in love with her uh, and then after a while she refused to marry him then he become angry very angry he become mad through angry and they had they have to put him in a hospital because of his madness and he stayed in a hospital for uh, four months and after he he recovered and he you know is ready to to leave the hospital so he is going out from the hospital taking them out then he he heard a noisy an angry man uh, he heard men more angry than him he when he came to the hospital so he asked who is this man I, I think he is very sick he is very mad who is this so they told him the one who married your ex-girl So he understood finally, oh God, you did not ask my prayers to marry her because you know ahead it is for my benefit to protect me. Sometimes we did not, we don't understand. You agree with me? Sometimes, why God? Why? No, just trust him and wait for him. Yeah, last time we watched a movie at home, uh, uh, Our Father Abraham's Life, and how he waited until he, 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 he had a son. And according to the, you know, our understanding, it is, it is hard. 100 years, and Sarah is 90 years, when God promised just wait just wait for him so if it is uh, the biblical prayers is powerful by this way is there any example we can we can see in the Bible or in life yeah I will take you very quick in some powerful biblical character we can examine and I will go just to to let you see God change not so what he did in the past he can do it right now and he will do it in future he changed not so the first person we can check Elijah and uh, Elijah James 5 17 said that is Elijah like a human being like us and he prayed a prayer that there is no rain and what happened three years six months no rain really yes and then he prayed that the rain will come and the rain came and there is a production from the earth, from the ground, from the soil. Is this a biblical prayer? Yes, if the prayers through your relationship with the word of God and Christ, you can ask 
whatever if it is according to his will the second person is Hezekiah do you know his story raise your hand if you know the story of Hezekiah Hezekiah was a, a king and God sent him uh, uh, the prophet and he, the prophet Isaiah told him Hezekiah prepare your house you are going to die arrange everything in your house so Hezekiah just start to pray and cry to God and he uses the word of God in his prayers what happened Isaiah is leaving the city then the angel of the Lord came to him Isaiah go back to Hezekiah and tell him that I heard his prayers and I will answer his prayers I will add 15 years to his life not only that but I will rescue him from his enemies can you imagine that you are going to die tomorrow then God will add you 15 years this heaven was Hezekiah there is uh, during my time in, in hotels industry when I start to work in hotels we don't have a fridge in, in our home so the hotel used to have a lottery uh, every Ramadan month and have a gift for all the staff and they draw the lottery and if your name come for a fridge or uh, whatever gift they have so uh, and all the family uh, of the staff members come for iftar meal at the hotel so my my son was five years old six years old something like that so he, he heard about that so he, he told me dad do you think we can win fridge I said pray ask Lord Jesus and uh, we'll see so he prayed we prayed for that I prayed with him Lois me and Mike prayed that God we need to have a fridge and uh, we don't have the money to buy a fridge so is this in this lottery at the hotel would you please help us to have this fridge so we went and we have you know dining table and uh, all the family's friends then Mike every day dad Jesus will give us the fridge okay dad after the iftar meal they start to draw the lottery Mike left the table and they stay beside the, 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 uh, the platform then they said next gift is the fridge and they make and they take the names it come the uh, general manager and according to the uh, protocol if the general manager or his assistant when they will not take it they will draw one more then they draw and they make it wagi so Mike wagi shakir butrus wagi shakir butrus so we win the fridge <laughs> we won it I don't have a money for uh, to ship it to home. I went to the to the uh, the, uh, the the restaurant, my my section, and they get loan from the tip, <laughs> and took the fridge at home. It is just prayers. It is just prayers, and uh, we have this story in our lives every time. And every guest come, Mike said, you know, this fridge Jesus gave it to us at the hotel. <laughs> The last character I would like to share you, do you know this young lady? Do you know her? Is there anyone know her? She is from America. Her name is Lillian Thrasher. Lillian Thrasher from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. 
she uh, born September 27th, 1887, and died December 17, 1961. And I uh, will very quick tell you about Lillian Trasher. Pastor Lillian, do you remember as youth when we went for the ordination? Lillian Trasher, 21, 23 years old, she is prepared for her marriage. Then she attended uh, a, a seminar and uh, feel that God is calling her to minister in Africa. So she went to apply for a job. She did not get the job. And then in her way back, she met a lady. Why you are sad, young lady? Yeah, I lost. I, I did not have my job. So she told her, I have an orphanage. Would you like to come to help me here in the States? She stayed with her two years. She loved the ministry more. Then she told her, I, I, God is calling me to go to Africa. So she met a pastor, is pastoring in, in Egypt during a dinner. So he, the pastor asked her, where in Africa would you like to go? She said, I don't know. Do you have the money? She said, no. Is your family will support you? She said, no, they are against my, my idea to travel. She said, he, he told her, okay, whenever you come to Africa, you can come to me in Astute, Egypt. She said, I would like to make a balance between my, uh, with the marriage and obeying God's word. She went to her fiance, would you come with me to Africa? He said, no. She left him. The marriage, the wedding, in 10 days, she left. Lillian Trasher went to the pastor in Asyut. She, he, she stayed with him. And then he, he told her, Lillian, would you visit this uh, uh, widow? Uh, she is dying. She went to the widow, and uh, she says, I enter very poor lady, has a young child. And she told me, lady, would you take... Uh, this child with you and she she said I look the milk is looks like a poison milk it is uh, his, it's the color of the milk it change and uh, the, the the kid is crying and then the lady died she said I took the child with me and they go with the missionary's place and the, the child began to cry so I decided to rent a small apartment so I will not bother the, the people at this place. Lillian Trasher, God gave her the biggest orphanage in the Middle East. There is many stories, I don't have time for it, but I will share you just one story. During the Second War, she decided to let every child and every widow go home to their neighbors or their relatives because there is no money. There is nothing because of the war. Nothing we have. So she gathered the, the, all the, the children and the widows at the, her place, said, I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm going to let everyone go to his relative because we don't have anything. I'm sorry to tell you that. And after the war, probably I will call you back. So they told her, you taught us to pray. You taught us how can Jesus is answering our prayers. We will pray. Then all of them come, cry to the Lord. Please, Lord, we don't like to leave this place. We love Mother Lillian. Please, Lord. She said, next day, I received a phone call from an American ambassador in Cairo. 
Lillian, I need you to come as soon as you can. She said, I don't know what is happening. So I left as you to Cairo, and in my way, I'm thinking why he is calling me by this way. He, she arrived, so he told her, Lillian, I would like to tell you this story. There is an American ship is going to Greece, have a lot of things, food, blanks, everything, medicine, and in their way, the captain here that Greece, uh, the German attacks Greece, so uh, they decided not to go. And the captain decided to unload everything in the sea and go back to the state. But one of the staff members at the ship come to the captain, he is from Switzerland. He called him, my mom told me she is praying for Lillian has an or orphanage in Egypt. Would you please try to go to Alexandria and leave all this instead of throwing them in the sea in Alexandria? He said, Alexandria is, they are attacking Alexandria too. He said, please, please. My mom used to pray for her. Please let us try that. They arrived to Alexandria. And everything arrived safe in Alexandria. The ambassador called Lillian, take whatever you want from this ship. She took everything, go to us youth. And she said, I learned a lesson from my kids that he is always answering the prayers. We have a challenge in our country now. We need to pray as a church for the problem of abortion. We need to pray continually, not 40 days of prayers. We need to pray for people who would like them to taste the gospel, knew the Lord Jesus Christ, to accept him continually. He is answering the prayers. He is answering the prayers. There is nothing impossible for him. Just pray. Just pray and be sure that nothing is hindering your prayers. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word and help us to pray, to live life, to glorify your name and to submit your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.